when we speak of isb and its impact on students the one word that stands out is transformation we welcome bright young minds to the school see them graduate with flying colors and go on to accomplish some incredible things all coming together i yeah. i owe so much of who i am guru to isb's one year experience and of course thereafter what's happened ankur wariku's journey from a management consultant to now a best selling author is a testament to resilience and reinvention as the founding ceo of groupon india and co-founder of nearby.com he redefined the e-commerce landscape with over 10 million followers online he is a top content creator making awareness the cornerstone of his mission an active angel investor in over 30 companies his passion for mentoring first time entrepreneurs shines through he has authored multiple best selling books and inspires countless readers educated as a physicist ankur found his true calling at the indian school of business over the years he has come back to isb on many occasions Ankur's deep-rooted urge to stay connected to the school and be a part of its journey is truly appreciable. Join me in a conversation with Ankur Wariku from the PGP class of 2006 as we delve into his entrepreneurial odyssey and the path to making informed choices in life. For us in terms of what it has allowed us from a capability point of view. Thank right. you for doing this conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you Guru for having yeah, me. Not at all. So, uh, I thought this will be a good sort of time for us to just reflect on your journey sure. ankur in the sense you spent one year here and next year you're going to be celebrating your 20, 20 years, years. so uh, one year here and 20 years outside outside <laughs> must be a very cliched question but sure, how do sure. you think isb has sort of helped you in your so in the various facets of your journey i can't even begin to tell you I, to to give you a background guru when i joined isb i had a year of experience so i was literally at the bottom of the pyramid when it came to experience 330 super exceptionally smart people i am one of the i think three or four people who had less than 2 years of experience i still don't know why isb admitted me but <laughs> thank god to whoever it was who accepted my application so i had nothing to give and all to take i had no idea about the real world so for me to spend time with people who had done sales and marketing and finance and it and hr and strategy and what not was just so refreshing and so transformational because i was getting to learn something real from them managing my time managing priorities but i think the biggest gift that isb gave me was how there is no one measurement or yardstick of success hmm. so before i came to isb my only impression of intelligence was grades and the school you went to got it so i was like oh iit smart yeah not iit mm. and and i fell in the same bucket i was not in the iits yeah. and i knew how hard it was to get in there so i was like no iit is the way this but once you come in here you realize that there are so many different definitions of both success and capability yeah there were people who were extremely high on eq people who were extremely high on leadership people who were brilliant with just raw iq people who were brilliant with in some way distilling complex information to simplified information people who just could pick up something really complicated and make something even better and help that. in peer learning absolutely so uh, it was just that one year was so much about what i'd never ever seen in my life or experienced that it just changed completely so what led you to choose isb or even go for a let's say a management no, program and, and that's I mean, a great that's a great question so I, I had actually a year back dropped out of my PhD program. I wanted to become a space scientist for the longest time. Okay. And I went to the US for a PhD program, 100% scholarship. I was top of my class, did it for 2 years, and then I realized it wasn't something that I was enjoying. I was good at it, but I wasn't enjoying it. Got it. And at that moment, I decided to come back to India, dropped out of my PhD program. And this was 2004. I was age 24. so i was quote and quote old enough to have not made this decision but i <laughs> still made it and at that point of time people funnily enough were like hey uh, why don't you just do an mba because that's like a reset that most people go through mm. if they don't know what to do in life just <laughs> go, go for an mba <laughs> <laughs> but because i'd had this dropout journey yeah i didn't know whether going for a two year mba was the right thing for me or not because right. i was like yeah i'll still go again and then maybe i'll figure out it's not the right program for me and then two years of time and money and blah blah and as luck would have it i came across isp hmm one year school 
completely new concept in India, yeah, only I five years old, yeah, yeah, that's true. but a brilliant pedigree to speak of, very smart minds coming together to bring this idea about. I was like, banta hai. Fantastic. And what, what did you do right after ISB? I mean, before I went, you were sort of I went to management consulting I, and I joined AD Kani, which was again so, so amazing because when I came to ISB, I, I had heard of this company called McKinsey. <laughs> But I had no idea what they do. What they do. And then when I came in, everybody was talking about consulting and everything was about consulting. And the more I got to know about it, the more I realized it could be something which is a good launch pad for me because I had no specialization. I had no experience to speak of. A year mm. is hardly any. So for me to spend time in consulting where you would be working on different projects, different industries, different business problems would be the best turning learning platform for me. So thankfully I made it and I spent three years there before becoming an entrepreneur in 2009. I mean, there's many times that I've seen you in on public platforms. I have to share this one particular speech of yours that okay. I attended. Uh, this was in 2017. I came to this conference in Mumbai. Yeah. You were a speaker there okay. at the People Matters conference. Uh, the one, the confidence with which you spoke about, you know, this whole aspect of, I think it was talent management and, and about sharing examples from nearby yeah. or Groupon, I think yeah. at that point of time, I'm yeah. not sure. Uh, and I think what was what struck to me was the authenticity with which you approach things, and there were clearly takeaways from for everyone in the room. I could I could see that I could see everyone either taking a note in their book or mental notes. How how have you built this whole thing? It's not clearly something that you know. I, I don't think it's a gift at birth. No, right? I think one it comes from age. I at at forty four, you've seen so much that very few things will just perturb you. Hmm. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm aging well yeah. and I'm aging wisely. But the uh, the bigger thing is I have always been a very ardent reflector of my circumstances. Hmm. And hmm. I'd like to believe that nobody chooses their circumstances in a way that they set themselves for failure or sure. a loss, but everyone fails in this world. Yeah. So the best thing that you can do is once that failure has happened to reflect upon it and to make sure that you are a changed person from there on. Not, not easy to achieve, but you know, because I, I, I mean, again, with age, I've started appreciating people who have less of an insecurity, uh, right? And sort of more self-assured people, yes, and it's yes. not easy. I am self-assured. So, am you know, that's, uh, that's an aspirational thing for, I would say, most people to sort of get to. I, I want to uh, talk a little bit about your professional journey sure. as well. So, you know, uh, the entrepreneurial stints that you have had, uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, what you built, what you set about, and also what made you sort of then move on, sure. you know, uh, that will be helpful. Yeah. And, and it's not funny that ISB has played a very important part in that as well. So while I was a consultant at Kani, I am meeting a batchmate of mine from ISB, same batch, same squad, not even the same batch, same quad. He was my quaddy. And he was like, I've started this new website and I wanted to talk to you about it. And I'm like, sure, what's it called? And he said, it's called secondshadi.com. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, that is such an incredible idea. So Vivek, who's the founder of Second Shadi, founder of Gadi, uh, he spoke about the idea. I really liked it. And I said, if there is any way that I can help. Uh, so for a year and a half, I actually had a day job as a consultant. And during whatever time was left out of that day job, I was helping Vivek hmm. with Second Chadi. Uh, and then Umang, who's another batchmate yeah. from same, he joined and he started building on, on Gadi.com. So we were like a bunch of ISBNs who were trying to do things on our own. And uh, then we went our separate ways and you know, there was a sale that happened and so on. And I again through ISB, through the alum email, one day get an email, uh, which is, hey, there's this German internet company and they're looking for people to set up the equivalent of what they run in Europe, in okay. India. And they're sure, that sounds interesting and it's an internet technology space right up my alley. So I send in my request for consideration and the next thing I know I'm sitting in front of them and I got recruited to lead the Groupon India business for Groupon through Fantastic. the ISB alumni email. Wow. Which happened in 2011. And that was fascinating. And then I was looking for my second in command to run the Groupon operations. And I go to a very dear friend from ISB, same batch. And he's like, hmm, this looks like a role that 
my best friend would be really good at. Hmm. So I then meet Ravi and I recruit Ravi in 2011 to join me in the Groupon, Groupon journey. Business. And he then became the nearby co-founder. Okay. Uh, so it's just so amazing how <laughs> these linkages somehow all go back to ISV. Interconnected and I sort of. do not lie when I say that this network has given me so much. So 2011 was Groupon, ran that for four years. Then in 2015, we started Nearby. Yeah. I ran that for four years, still continues to run. But in 2019, I stepped down as a CEO and I said, I've spent a decade what in this industry. What led you to sort of step down from like... It was just the fact, a it, was a, it was a very strong realization, Guru, that my time there would not materially change the outcome of the company. Hmm. Uh, and I had Ravi, who I absolutely love, very capable of running the show. I had Snehesh, who's the other co-founder, very capable of running the show. So I was like, you know, it's in really good hands. I have spent a decade trying to build this out and I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. But I think my time's done and I would want to see what, what else, else could I do. Mm. Not knowing that I would land up here. And uh, that's why I, I, I took a break. And as luck would have it, in those three months that I took the break, COVID happened <laughs> and everything <laughs> then changed. changed for everybody. Did you, did you anticipate where you would be now, even at the beginning no of COVID? Way. In terms of, you know, no way. Like no, writing I, these books, creating content, not at having all, all not this. Not at all, not at all, Guru. I, I think, you no, know, uh, hindsight is six by six, so it's very easy, but yeah, I will yeah. always be like, there is no way I could have forget imagined, even planned to be here in hmm. life. It's just right place, right time, a lot of luck, a little bit of hard work that's just gotten me to this point. But it's so baffling to me that I am in this position. Uh, when less than 20 years back, I was completely lost in life, dropped out of a program, entering a completely new world where yeah. I was intimidated. I felt like I was worth nothing. There were such bright minds around me and I had nothing to offer. Uh, and look at how life worked. What would you attribute your sort of success, if if I can use the word success? Consistency and authenticity. I, okay. I think you, you, you use the, the right words. Very, very, very few people are persistent and do it for long enough to see the results. Hmm. Like I genuinely believe, Guru, that last man standing is a life strategy. Hmm. It's not hmm. a way of life, it's a strategy. Just be the last man standing. And, and you will see so many outcomes unfold for yourself. It seems like I've been doing it for the last three years. I've been doing this for nearly 15 years. Fun fact, when I joined ISB, there was so much that used to happen every day. I was like, I have to record this, I have to document this. And at that point in time, blogging was a really big thing. Yeah. So yeah. I started my blog and I started writing every day about my life as an ISB student. And that started in 2005, I still maintain the blog and I've written on that blog every day for the last 18 years. Oh my God. And I've never stopped. And if you go, if, well, I don't think anybody would, but if one were to go back to May 2005, they it's will all there. see everything about my life at ISB. It's all available in public, all on your open. blog. All, all open. This is what I did. This is the exam that I did well in. This is the exam that I didn't do well in. This is where I had awesome food. This is when we partied. This is when something happened. Everything is documented. Now, of course, the nature of content has changed over sure, years. Sure, sure. That's when I started. And you know, LinkedIn has been nearly 10 years. Uh, Instagram and YouTube have been nearly eight years now. So it all seems in the last three years because it blew up during sure, COVID. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, I think the the early years, I guess the results of compounding sort exactly. of kicks in. That, that's, it's just the best lesson I've learned. And yeah. that's why I say consistency and being authentic. Then people just know he is this person. Mm. And now he's not putting up a facade. We've seen him for so many years. He's been the same person. Uh, so there must be some truth to it. Correct. I, I guess we only see when you come to the top, we don't necessarily recognize exactly. what happens. And uh, I, uh, I love meeting people in general. I, I love people's stories and I, I really enjoy listening to people's stories, their life. And I'm a very curious person, so I ask a lot of questions. And So that curiosity is also what led you to be an author? I uh, How did I, this journey sort of, you know, because content creation on social media versus yeah. writing books, which are sort of bestsellers is... Not everybody does that. So I have the... really liked writing all my life. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. And what happens because of this active content creation is 
you're creating content. Yeah. So you don't have to really now think about it. So when people ask me, how long does it take you to write this book? Or how long did it take, say, my latest book, Make Epic Money to Write? I was like, it, it, you know, it's been in the works for 30 years because it's literally my entire life and my experiences around money that I've written. Yeah. But all the content has been produced already. So all I have to do is literally transcribe it and edit it. I don't have to write a book, thankfully, as a creator. You're just creating content. And that's why the commitment of writing a book every year, otherwise it would not be possible. Yeah. If I were to and so that's also like, in line with your consistency. Part. Yes, I, I love... I'm a very, very boring person. <laughs> I love doing the same thing every day and I can do the same thing every day. So I just, my objective in life, Guru, is find what I have to do in life, yeah. find a repeatable way of doing it and just keep doing it. And it will take you to some place in life Rinse that you could not repeat have or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> just keep at it bef- bef- uh, and you'll become a better version Correct, of yourself. Yes. Uh, you, you've been watching ISB closely. What have you seen the school sort of go through and as, a, as an alum who's, you know, an insider in yeah. that sense, but also yeah. from the outside. Yeah. Yeah. What's your sense of how the school has, you know, been on this journey? I, I've seen two big differences uh, in a good way, Guru. One is, it just seems like the current batch is a lot more aware of what they want to do. Okay. Then what I think we were. <laughs> uh, maybe because it's also a function of you know, how the country is shaping up and the opportunities that they sure. are. They're just so clear when they enter this is what I'm going after, it's product management or it's consulting or it's anything else. And the, even to the extent of the companies I'm aiming for and from day one, that's like the goal and target hmm. and they, hmm. they get past that. And uh, number two, which I feel has happened just by the sheer force of 20 plus years of existence is the network effect coming through. It is, and my story is not an exception. It's the norm now, hmm. where if you were to sit with any alum five years out, so many of their life professional decisions would be driven to some direct and indirect relationship with ISB. And, and that's the power of a school, right? Hmm. So what I see students also do is they recognize that ISB is not a placement agency, yeah. where they yeah. come in, give the fee, then go out with a job. It's an investment that you make in your life, perhaps the biggest one that you will make nearly as equivalent to buying a house of your own. And it's for life. Mm. It's for life. Clearly. Yeah. So, so they're very wise in that. Um, while the year can easily amount to a lot of pressure during yeah. that year where you know, there are nervous cold course, feet and so of on. Of course, there's always. But I think broadly they are very appreciative of how the network works for them and the audacity with which they approach then their ambitions and their goals uh, is, is very inspiring, very awe-inspiring, in fact. And what would your, sort of, if you were to give an advice or two to the dean or to the school in terms of where we should be going from here on or how, what would your, I mean, you, you have also been part of the school's Next Generation yes. Leaders Board and Leaders, sat on yeah. some of these meetings. Yeah, yeah. So Look, I, as I was mentioning to the dean, I do see ISB as very aspirational for particularly the Indian young audience. Yeah. And and I feel that we have a brilliant opportunity to catch them young. That doesn't need to be an organized curriculum for a year or anything like that. But whatever intervention that ISB can provide in terms of experience, in terms of network, in terms of the access that we have to companies, to minds, to academic rigor, uh, getting them all appreciate that and in some way get connected will be such a meaningful contribution to the country because uh, most students don't have this access and they Mm. believe that the only access is available outside of the country. Yeah. Uh, And that is not the case. Certainly, I don't believe so. And and I think, uh, I can't think of any other institute at a business education level in this country that is set up more favorably to do this than ISB. Lovely. Last question, Ankur, in terms of... I mean, I know a lot of young people relate to you and want to be uh, sort of, you know, I think in some sense, be like you, I think. Uh, So what's the message that you have for them? And also, what would you advise the current set of students at ISB and the sort of incoming students at ISB? I'd largely want to the youth of this country say that I don't think there's a better time to be alive than now. 
the next 10, 20, 30 years for this country is going to be an unprecedented golden period. I firmly believe so. Sure. And somebody who's in their 20s going, is going to reap the most benefit from that. It's nearly like the 1970s in the US, the gold rush that's coming through. And there will be not just money to be made, but just opportunities, time a dozen, for you to change the orbit in which you were born, to give your parents the life that you think they always deserved. Of course, carve that life out for yourself. So the worst thing that you can do is at this point of time, try and settle. And when I say settle, I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean sure. that don't try and just go to the prescribed route that you saw your parents do because that worked for them and was necessary for them at that point. But we all have a very different opportunity in front of us. And if we can go out, build businesses or take risks and be willing to learn and challenge ourselves and not get comfortable, surround ourselves with people who are very different from us, we could draw so much from the next two to three decades that generations will always look at us at envy and be like, wow, that was a lucky 30-year stint that <laughs> they all went through. Fascinating, Ankur. I could go on and on, but I know we have to call time at some point. Thank and you. this is the time. Uh, thank you so much for having thank this you conversation. So I think it's, uh, it's incredible, uh, uh, you know, like I was telling you on the walk here that we get to experience and come across people such as yourselves at this wonderful place, uh, ISB. And, uh, you know, just, just you know, uh, sort of in some sense also be part of the journey. But more importantly, and I say this shamelessly every other place, that we take credit for your success. No, so You all deserve it. Well, because this is such a well-oiled machinery and I come here every time and I, and I look at it. Like, I, I remember at ISB Mohali, uh, no, I, I entered this campus and Hyderabad, of course, is like home. I was like, you know. It's not just the classroom, it's not the faculty. Somebody has to also think of the fact that the grass has to be cut and the bushes have to be clean and the roads have to be clean. And it's, there is such commitment and hard work that mm. goes into running an education institution and an infrastructure such as big as this. And it's, it's fascinating. I, I cannot thank enough to every single one of you who puts in so much of work and has done so for so many years. Because this is a landmark for the country and yeah. the country will Truly. always, always be thankful. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Lovely. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All the best.